In this video, we discuss the security of the Bitcoin blockchain. We assume that you are familiar with basic terminology such as transactions, blocks, and mining. Let's start our investigation with the so-called 51% attack. In Bitcoin, we build a chain of blocks, like this. Every Lego block is a block that contains transactions. Each block has a pointer to the previous block in the form of a cryptographic hash, shown with an arrow. In this video, time increases from left to right, so if a new block is found, it is attached to the previous rightmost block. We can use colors to describe the blocks. A yellow block is just any old block. We use green to signal that the block was created by a miner that plays according to the rules. Each block contains transactions. This green block for instance contains a very valuable transaction, for instance a transaction where the money for an expensive supercar changes hands. If everything goes well, miners produce more and more blocks. In Bitcoin, the parameters are set such that a new block is found about every 10 minutes. So after roughly 30 minutes, three more blocks are appended to the block that contains the expensive transaction. At that point the seller of the car might be sure enough that the transaction is in the blockchain and the buyer can drive away with the car. However, what if the car buyer is an evil attacker with a lot of mining power? Let's assume the attacker produces these red blocks on the side. The attacker produces these blocks in secrecy and does not tell anybody about these red attack blocks. If the red attacker has more mining power than all the green honest miners together, even just 51% of the total mining power, then it is very likely that eventually the chain of the red attacker is longer than the green chain. As soon as the attacker has more blocks, the attacker will reveal these red blocks to the public. Then all the honest miners see that there is a longer chain available. Honest miners will append new blocks to the longest chain, so the green chain is ignored, and with it all the transactions in the green chain, including our transaction that transfers the money for the car. So the attacker managed to get a car and at the same time managed to censor the transaction paying for the car. The attacker may even include another transaction in one of their red attack blocks. This transaction spends the money to buy another supercar, or simply moves the money to a new account, making sure that the original car buying transaction is no longer valid. So in this scenario the attacker got away with a car without paying anything. How much does such an attack cost? Let's do a quick back of the envelope calculation. The idea of the attacker is to rent some mining gear for a short amount of time. At the time of making this video, a miner receives about 7 bitcoins per block, and as said before, a new block is found about every 10 minutes, so we have about 6 blocks per hour. Although the bitcoin price fluctuates a lot, let's assume that each bitcoin is worth about 100,000 US dollars. This means that all the miners make about $4.2 million every hour. This is also a rough estimate for the energy consumption of Bitcoin. As long as all miners combined pay less than $4.2 million per hour for their energy, they are making a profit, and they have an incentive to buy more mining hardware and spend even more energy. Assume that our attacker knows some big miners well, and the attacker simply rents their hardware for an hour. The attacker needs a majority of mining power, but if the attacker pays more money to the miners than they would earn with regular mining, they make a profit. So, in principle, this attack costs only 51% of $4.2 million, which is $2.1 million. Now clearly, in reality, miners are not this naive. If miners just gave their mining power to the highest bidder, attacks like this might happen all the time. This would seriously undermine the trust in the system. While theoretically this $2.1 million attack is possible, in reality miners would surely charge a much bigger premium to borrow their mining hardware. In the second part of the video we ask ourselves a surprising question. Could it be sensible to attack the blockchain with even less mining power? Let's go directly to the source, the original paper by a person only known as Satoshi Nakamoto. This paper is only 8 pages long. In contrast to most scientific papers on the subject, it is easily readable. In that original paper, already on the first page, Nakamoto claims that Bitcoin is secure as long as more than half of the mining power is controlled by honest miners. This way the longest chain grows fastest, and attackers stand no chance. The word honest carries a lot of weight in these sentences. So it is worth asking what honest behavior means. 
Nakamoto is not very precise on this, but essentially Nakamoto seems to assume that honest miners extend the longest chain and that it is in their interest to publish a block as soon as they find it. This way they have a better chance to earn the bounty bitcoins and the fees in each new block. But is this really in their best interest? Consider a miner who controls a large share of the mining power. Maybe not quite 50% but something slightly lower than that, for instance, 40% of the mining power. Assume we start with a clean slate, that is, an undisputed yellow block at the end of the blockchain. Now the miner finds a block, but interestingly, like before, the miner keeps that block secret. With 40% mining power, there is a non-negligible chance that the miner finds a second block, and maybe even a third one before any new block is actually published. What's the probability that a miner with 40% mining power finds three blocks in a row before the other miners find a block? This is a good time to pause the video and ask yourself this question. With 40% mining power, our attacker has exactly a 40% chance to find the next block. To find three blocks in a row without being interrupted has a probability of 40% times 40% times 40%, or simply 40% to the power of 3, which is about 6.5%. So the chance for this to happen is not big, but it's certainly possible. Once our attacking miner is three blocks ahead, the attacker is pretty safe. Maybe the attacker can increase their advantage even more, but even if the honest miners find and publish a block, the attacker secretly still has a longer chain. If the honest miners catch up to the attacker and are only one block behind, the attacker should get nervous. At this point the strategy of the attacker is to publish all their blocks right away, to make sure that the attacker chain is still the longest. Like before, this will immediately render the work of the honest miners useless, as none of their blocks are in the longest chain. So is this risky strategy paying off? Let's analyze it in more detail. What we see here is a so-called Markov chain. The Markov chain has states 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. Each state marks how many blocks the attacker is secretly in the lead. In our example before, the system started out in state 0 with only a yellow block. Then the attacker found three blocks. If the attacker finds a block, we call this an alpha event. Each alpha event increases the advantage of the attacker by one more block, until we are in state 3. Then the honest miners found a block and we are back to state 2. If the honest miners find a block, we call this event beta. At state 2, another green block is published, and the miner decides to publish all its blocks, going back to state 0. So again, the state number here means how many blocks the attacker is secretly in the lead. It's the number of blocks of the red chain minus the number of blocks of the green chain. In any state, two things can happen. Either the attacker finds a block, which we call a transition alpha, or the honest miners find a block, which is a transition beta. If we run a blockchain, we essentially jump around in this Markov chain. If you run the blockchain for a long time, which state is visited most often? Please pause the video and think about this. Since we assume that the honest miners have more mining power, transition beta happens more often, so when we jump around in this Markov chain, we are usually in state 0, sometimes in state 1, and only rarely do we actually jump to higher states. We usually are in state 0, that is, the attacker has no secret blocks at all. Everybody agrees on the last public block in the blockchain. Most likely, in state 0, the honest miners find a block, so we append a green block, and we experience a transition event beta. In this case the green block is published, and everybody agrees on it. We might say that this green block is like a yellow block again, since everybody agrees on it. Rarely, the attacker will find a block. This is happening with a transition event alpha, and we jump to state 1. If another transition alpha happens, we jump to state 2. Now let's assume that a transition beta happens. As you can see, in state 2, with transition beta, we immediately jump back to state 0. The reason is that the attacker does not want to risk losing its two secret blocks, so the attacker releases both blocks at once, and the green block is not in the longest chain anymore. There is one last case we didn't discuss. Say that the attacker is one block ahead, so we are in state 1. Now a green block appears. In this case the attacker publishes the red block immediately as well. 
now it's up to any miner to decide where to append the next block. The attacker surely appends the next block after its own red block to win both blocks. Honest miners would usually append the next block at whatever block they have seen earlier. But if the attacker has a really good network connection, it might see the green block earlier than most other miners. In this case the attacker might convince some of the miners that the red block was actually released before the green block. Note that the miners of course are colorblind, for them, these are just blocks. When doing such a Markov chain analysis, we first have to figure out with what probability we are in what state. Then we have to understand whether the attacker is winning a block. We can do the counting whenever an honest block is found, so only at transitions of type beta. Quite likely, a transition beta will happen at state 0, so that block will be green. In most other cases however, at transition beta, a red block will make it to the blockchain. This is true for all the states on the right. If we are in state 2 and transition beta happens, the attacker even releases two additional red blocks. The most interesting case is the beta transition in state 1. If this happens we have the race between a green and a red block. Who wins depends how well the miner is connected in the network, how many honest miners the attacker can convince that the red block was actually first. We skip the actual math and just show the results. If the attacker has no power at all over the network and every honest miner will see the green block first, one third of the mining power is enough to mine a higher ratio of blocks than when being honest. If the attacker has a fast network and honest miners append their next block 50-50 with the red and green block, then already one-fourth of the mining power is enough to gain an advantage over being honest. And finally, if the attacker manages that the honest miners always append their next block behind the red block in case of a race, this strategy is always profitable. Let us summarize this video. We have seen that 51% attacks on blockchains are surprisingly cheap if miners were willing to rent out their mining infrastructure. And we have seen that it might be profitable to be dishonest. This and other tricks show that it is not trivial to understand whether a blockchain is actually secure, because we first have to understand whether following the rules is the best strategy. Thanks for watching this video.